you could feel their momentum when they walk to mm. a ring and when they beat a team, you just like, yeah, they're going to be a, a big, big name in this industry one day. And, uh, uh, I don't think anyone denies that. I think a lot of, when you ask someone like Unsocial Jordan, he changes the subject very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> he moves on very quickly because I think everyone knows that back pain are just the moment they get their heads and get focused, like, you know, they're, they're growing as a team, they're just going to be unstoppable. Oh, the velocity dude, should be nervous. Dude, the velocity is heading to Melbourne, bro. You know, versus wow. the rat pack. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how fucking good is that going to be, dude? Like, yeah. mm. well, the, the, yeah. like just just for everyone else as well, the MCWs of the world, EPWs, shout out Perth, all that stuff. Like, uh, this time away has been able to let us build to these big showdowns, and that's just. There's a couple of matches on that card that I'm like, wow, that's great. Uh, I'm really excited to see them back and doing shows because it just breeds that competition, it breeds that oh. growth of all the companies. I love it. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, man, and mm. you know, definitely seeing you know those sort of guys, man. I, I love the new addition to them, the the gym bro. <laughs> oh yes, uh, Wild Kelly Wild is it? Yeah, I think it's Kelly Wild. I only met her briefly, but boy, is she an entity! My goodness, she she just trance through that room and was like, I run shit now. Like, <laughs> I love her. She's great. She just made a real <laughs> statement and back pages with, she runs shit now. And it just, they, they found a symbiotic relationship. And I think for the first time, back pain feel like they can kind of be themselves instead of like, we need to fit a certain, because I think some people come into PW, PWA and see what they've seen and go, we need to do something that fits in with that. But once they find their own voice and their own thing, suddenly they're calling everyone simps and they're just, you know, it's, it's great. Chris is a simp. I don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure he is one. But that's the thing with them. Like you see two big dudes in the, like the automatically you think big tag team killers, mm. you mm. know, and to uh, let them have a little bit of a sense of humor and like that video that they put out, like when I first watched it, I was like, what are they doing? No, they should be killers. They should be. And then I went, no, I'll watch it again. I was like, no, what they're doing is good because now they're expo they're they're doing another side of their character and they're doing yeah. something different, which is against the grain of what everyone expects two big dudes as a tag team to be. Mm. And I think uh, more than some other companies as well. There's a lot of lot of PWA that is inherently fun, and um, I think the PWA locker room and the atmosphere there brings out the fun in a lot of people and you and you see that um that like even guys like back pain who are lean mean ass kicking machines can still come to the ring and have some fun and i and i like yeah. that about that like even someone like jack j bonzo who's just been such a stoic character for so long is now being led around as member of the bad bitch nation with kingsley and i just think that's so fun for someone who's so mm. serious to be forced into a fun environment will, will actually help you know, uh, help him grow, I think, out of it. So, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, it shows different aspects to performers. And I think, you know, if the performer's open to doing it, it can be really, really good. And it can definitely, you know, give something different and a different aspect of it. It's the same as, like, you know, you look at something like when Kurt Angle started doing the comedy thing with Stone Cold Steve Austin. It wasn't they became jokes. It was became, okay, that was pretty funny. They entertained us on a different level, both bad motherfuckers still. Like, yeah. Um, is it Leslie Nielsen? Was he the guy in the Naked Gun movies? Yes, yes. He's a great example of someone who did his whole career as a serious stage actor and all this serious stuff. And then in his, what, 60s, late 50s, yeah. early 60s, he did a Naked Gun movie and everyone went, or was Flying High, I think was the first one. Anyway, everyone's like, this guy's hilarious. And they built a whole comedy series around him so i think you know there's there's so much people that think they can't grow and evolve because of their age are just insane like there's so much you could do dude it's you know what it's funny man and i look at someone like chris jericho who you know he's been someone i consider like the dave Grohl of professional wrestling because he's been fucking cool for 30 years mm. you know what i mean like yeah. like the, you can't deny that you know and He's someone who has been able to evolve with the business and with the times and do it in such a transitional way. You know, like I think who else can say that they've done that? The Undertaker? 
yeah, okay. Like, mm. it, you know, it's always been very much similar, the same character, but it's been different variations of it where I think Chris Jericho has really changed look, style, body shape, and all these different things of a performer. Hmm. I wonder who do you think comes close to him? Because I, I think you're right that he's probably the the talent that's evolved the most amount of times successfully. I mean, Bray Wyatt's like early in his career and he has the mm. potential. I mean, Mick Foley was a great one. He had so many different aspects of the characters and, and stuff like that. So I guess Foley would be the only one I can think of that comes close to Jericho for like evolution of character, I guess. Yeah, I think mm. as well. But I think it's like when the world got to know him as Mick Foley, it's that's what made him who he, you know what I mean? Like that lovable character. Like it was him yeah. as a person as opposed to like the wrestler because when you started seeing the different aspects of, mm. uh, you know, his life behind the screen and when he's been in documentaries like, you know, Beyond the Mat, and which was, you know, 20 plus years ago. But still, it's like it, it gives that insight to the person's life as opposed yeah. to just what you see on camera. Adam makes a good suggestion here, maybe Shawn Michaels. I considered Shawn Michaels, but the interesting thing about him was that that was more of a core life change, wasn't it? That wasn't necessarily a character he, change. He, like, yeah, he changed the it, person. He, he was just, yeah, the character was stayed the same. Like the, the character stayed the same. Kurt Angle, same thing, the, you know, phenomenal you know, show different aspects of, of his character. But I, I think that, you know, the gimmick was always the same with Kurt Angle. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. you couldn't have him then being the fucking boogeyman, you know? And just like uh, the Dave Grohl, which is a good example, um, Chris Jericho can have his moments as just like Dave Grohl does of kind of being a corny dad as well. Yeah. Like, even though you're eternally cool, every now and then Dave Grohl will come out at the Tokyo Dome with crow makeup on and a hat and you kind of go, oh, dad, you look lame. <laughs> like, you know <laughs> Dude, I, I I got sent. The, I got to show you this. I got sent today, and I I'm a Jericho fan, but this meme that I saw. I was like, where is it? I got to find this for you. Here you go. It's a photo of Jericho, like that. Oh yeah, yeah. And it yeah. reads Chris Jericho out here looking like your recently divorced, a uh, aged alcoholic aunt who just took a pre bowling alley night selfie before <laughs> heading out to meet her Tinder date named Chuck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it is kind of life imitating art, isn't it? Because he kind of plays that David Lee Roth, um, yeah, out of control rock star front man, and I think he kind of does look like an out of control rock star front man now. And I, I respect the method acting it takes to be that, dude. I, I think it, it, I think it's absolutely great, dude. If I could have hair like that, bro, and walk around dressed like that, why the fuck would like you're Chris Jericho? <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's the thing you just heard us say is like yeah like, if i was chris jericho i'd wear a scarf too you're right i would I just yeah, can't yeah, yeah. Off with my body <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of uh big show going over to AEW? yeah i mean uh, to me uh, i was never a huge big show guy uh but i respect the difficulty of a big man i know how difficult it is to be a successful big man you need other you always need other people to kind of work off you so Mm. I thought he did a great job very young in his career. I thought he was really impressive when he first started. Like you go back and watch that old WCW stuff and he came out of the gates strong, but mm. uh, his role. Him. Yeah, they did. They did. And, and as the world should, because they had a young mm. giant there, like they had the future of the big man industry, but as your career goes on, your, your role becomes different and it becomes incredibly harder for a big man to continue at the capacity or the pace that they would at their prime. Uh, and I think of all the interviews I've seen of Paul White, it seems like he's a very uh, straight down the line, there's business and there's personal. And he'll be honest with you about the personal, but he'll always be very honest about the business. And I think in this situation, AEW just offered him more money. And um, he took it. And I'm glad to see him doing some commentary stuff because I'm interested to see him do commentary. Maybe I can learn a thing or two. And um, getting a paycheck because, you know, you got to make that money. The only thing I, I I was a bit like, hey, going on was like the t-shirt, no more BS. Like, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, it's yeah. like, you know, for like what, like you're just trying to drum up. I don't know if it's like to try and drum up that sort of like 
old school wrestling WCW versus WWF from the nineties type shit. But mm. like, I just see it as like are good we, marketing, we, but why? We're two weeks away from someone wearing a t-shirt. That's like someone dropping a WWE title into a garbage bin, like on the front of it. That'd be cool. It'd be very <laughs> mater if someone wore that while doing a spit. Yeah, it is. It is kind of, yeah. Like the life of imitating art, imitating life. Like I get a lot of PTSD right now uh, about, the, the the wars that are going on in wrestling because I'm like I swear I've been through this before I swear this is uh, this is deja vu I, I swear I've been and I hope it doesn't end the same way because I loved the wars and if we get more competition that's great I hope it doesn't end with one company buying the other I hope we just can keep it going but it is weird isn't it it feels like I've I've been here before this feels familiar. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Like it's 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 almost like you know, like you know, I've seen a meme of like Sting and Big Show in WCW back in the day with the AEW logo on it, saying AEW AEW Nitro. Mm. <laughs> you know, like it's just like I said, it's you know, it just almost like it's 